Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Remco Venepol and Tadej Potocar are two of pro cycling's biggest talents and they are both the big hopes for their respective nations of Slovenia and Belgium. And both riders have won the Vuelta al Algarve with Remco Venepol snatching Tadej Potocar's record this year of being the youngest winner of the race by 127 days beating Tadej Potocar's record from 2019. 2019 was a breakthrough season for both riders. Tajay Potocar won the general's classification, the Tour of Algarve, the Tour of California, and in addition to that, he also won three stages in the Vuelta España, along with taking a third place finish behind Alejandro Valverde and the overall winner, Primoz Roglic. Remco Evenepoel, in his first season with the Kona Quickstep, at an age of only 19, managed to win the Tour of Belgium DC and sensationally win the Classica San Sebastian in front of a world tour peloton and he also displayed his incredible time trial talent by winning the elite European time trial title and finishing second in the elite world time trial championships only to Rowan Dennis. Rembo Venipol has started the 2020 season supremely by winning the Tour San Juan GC and winning the Vuelta Al Elgarve. Winning the Tour of Algarve is something that Tajay Potocar did in 2019, so we thought it would be an interesting comparison to see their times of the glorious climb of Alto de Foya. Both riders recorded victories up the stage on their respective editions, and to make it fair, we can look at the final 4 kilometers and the final 1 kilometer of their respective climbs, as this is more fair as they didn't do entirely the same route up the climb. And this means that we'll be able to get a picture of which of the riders were actually faster on their respective victories when it was crunch time. The total length of the climb is 7.4 kilometers long, with an average gradient of 6% and the maximum gradient is 11.7%. Fortunately for us, Tajay Potichar did something most top pros don't do nowadays. He shared his race data on Strava for us to analyze. However, Remco Evenepoel did not share his data, so we'll have to extrapolate from the race footage and Leonard Kamner's Strava data. For four kilometers to the top, Tajay Potichar had a time of nine minutes and nine seconds, and he still holds the KOM for that segment. His average power, as we can see, is 399 watts, and his peak wattage was 871 watts, but we will look closer at that in the one kilometer segment. Leonard Kamner, who finished 14 seconds down on Remco Venipol in the end, completed the segment in nine minutes and 20 seconds. So with the 14 seconds, taken away of which he finished down on Remco, we can assume that Remco Venipol actually did the segment in 9 minutes and 6 seconds. Kahneman's average power for the segment was 382 watts and his peak was 591 watts, considerably lower than what we think Remco actually did over the segment. The weight of Tajay Potocar is around 66 kilograms and Leonard Kamner is similar at around 65 kilograms. Remco Venipol Meanwhile, despite a few of you saying he needs to lose weight, is only 61 kilograms. So you can kind of see that Remco Venipol's power to weight ratio is actually phenomenal. For the segment of the last kilometer to the top, Tajay Potocar recorded a time of two minutes and eight seconds, and Leonard Kamner time was two minutes and 14 seconds across the segment, with an average gradient of 6%. By extrapolation, Remco Venipol would have recorded a time of two minutes as he surges off the front with 800 meters to go to the finish line. And it's quite a phenomenal display of power that the young Belgian actually does on this climb. Using Leonard Kamner's power file, we can see the surge in power from the German rider as Remco Evenepoel attacks. His average power across the segment is 392 watts and his peak is 557 watts which comes as teammate Juan Almedia drives the pace really hard just before Remco Venipol charges off the front and this is also to catch Simon Geschke who's broken off the front. Tadej Potocar had a higher power average for the segment of 447 watts and his peak wattage was 871 watts. He manages to sustain a power of over 500 watts for nearly all of the last 500 meters and his initial attack at its lowest is 693 watts and at its maximum 871 watts. This would probably be a similar wattage to the power Remco produced to get his initial gap 
on the leaders. This is a very fascinating comparison of the two superstars in the making as they have not yet had any substantial showdowns as of yet and we were robbed a showdown of the two superstars this year as Podachar favoured the UAE tour. Their first clash this year should be at Flesh Valone which is maybe not a race that either of them will be expecting to win at this stage but who knows with this level of talent anything could happen. That's it for this video. Who do you think is the better rider? Tadja Podachar or Remco Evenepoel? Let us know down in the comments and if you're new here why not subscribe to not miss out on any of our videos and thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.